Hello, dog lovers, and welcome to another live show. Hope you're doing well and everything is going well. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see Welcome me. to another. Okay, we go. We good. Looks like we're everything all, all set. I uh, hope you're doing well and everything is going well in this live video session. I'm going to answer your questions live and the way I will do it this time is a little bit different. I may pick uh, some of you and really dig in the, uh, the help that you need. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Uh, so make sure to ask your question in the chat area. And if you want to support the channel as well, make sure to use the super chat option so you can really get uh, not only the questions of your um, specific problem that you have with your dog answered, but also you're, you're supporting the channel. Uh, one of the questions that is very common in my um, channel, I would say, is that many people wonder that if the dog is not um, food motivated, uh, food um, play or praise motivated. How do we how do we go about training those dogs? How do we motivate these dogs who are not uh, really um, play or praise motivated, they are very food motivated. I'm going to really talk about this as well, and I'm going to explain uh, how that works. Uh, but let me make sure that everything is set here. We're good. OK. And as I said, go ahead and feel free to ask your questions in the chat area. And if, you if you're watching this video after uh, it's been live, you can always ask your questions in the comments area. So let's talk about how do we motivate a dog who is not, let's say, play or praise motivated. And it's only food motivated. How do we get this dog to be listening to us? Or how can we get this dog to train? So one of the biggest mistakes that we, we make as a dog owner when we are uh, dealing with our dogs is that we limit ourselves to the treats. We say, okay, that's that's the only way that we have uh, the a way of communicating to our dog, and that's the only way that we can train our dogs. That and that limitation, that mindset itself is a, is a block. It's a limit that makes us to not to even try to do anything else. Um, and that itself, the mindset, first of all, has to change. The mindset has to say, OK, I have to understand and I have to accept the fact that my dog can be motivated with, with variety of things, with several things. It doesn't have to be only treats. You have to understand that dogs are more motivated not only with treats, but not only with play or not only with praise. They are motivated with many, many things. But naturally, every dog is born with being motivated by either play or praise. And believe it or not, treats or food is a uh, an addition that as a human being we add to that as a it's a motivation that humans uh, add to the formula it, it's natural naturally they're not thinking okay I, when i am born i'm gonna start caring about treats so uh, i'm gonna start adding that treat as my um, as one of my initial motivators motivators for life they don't they're not born like that they're not saying that treats is my main uh, form of reward naturally dogs when they are born they are motivated by natural um, occurrences natural beings that they are born with which are play and praise what that means is not in the form that we use it, but in a form that natural nat nature gives it to any living thing, any dog, for example. Uh, naturally, puppies, when they are born, 
If you look at them, they will play with each other. So play is very important. Not only it's a good reward-based uh, reward for the dog, but praise, you know, praise animals, for example, or dogs, they don't say good boy or good girl. They lick each other. They pet, kind of touch each other. Have you seen dogs touching each other? That itself is a reward, it's a praise. So they do get reward naturally, or they do give naturally to rewards to each other. So it's very interesting if you change the mindset, first of all, that treats or food are not something that are in their genes, in their instincts, when they are born as a reward. And once you change that mindset, once you understand this concept, then you are going, as a dog owner, you're going to be more creative to come up with ways to, to reward your dog. And play and praise is, as I said, are more natural ways of doing it. But unfortunately, uh, the humans have also created this um, mindset in, in dog, uh, dog uh, marketing plan has been that food or treats are the best motivator for the dogs and they have you know food companies treat making companies they have done a great job of um, um, promoting and uh, marketing that treats or food are the only thing that you need but that's a marketing plan, you know, it's not real, it's not, it's not very true. It's like asking the kids to play games and pretend that they're doing the real thing. It's not real. Games are not real. They're pretend, they're imaginary, they are made up. Treats are the same thing. Treats are made up. They're not natural, they're not real, right? When you use play and praise to reward your dog, that's real because you're really getting involved with, with, with your dog. You're interacting with your dog. It's real. It has feelings. It has, it has emotions behind it. It has uh, uh, effects that you and your dog get. So it's very natural to use play and praise. And if you feel that your dog is not motivated by treats, I guarantee you, your dog at this stage is not motivated by anything. Uh, or your dog is, you're saying, you may say, I saw my dog is not motivated by play or praise, only response to treats. That's a broken connection that you have that you have to fix. And if you ask any dog trainer, other dog trainer, they will tell you that, oh, no, you, you have to use treats because that connects you better. But I tell you that they are also being brainwashed to force the marketing of treats and food to you. So you will focus on that rather than the real thing, which is making connection with your dog, making it real, making it in a way that your dog says, okay, you are really taking the time to interact with me, right? You're taking the time to interact with me instead of depending on treats. Treats are, are shortcuts. Treats in a ways, in a ways are uh, a lazy person's way of training a dog. A real person who has a dog and has energy and uh, the time and effort dedicated to their dogs will invest time to train their dogs with the real thing which is play and praise and uh, hmm? yeah build the relationship between their dogs and themselves right uh, i'll tell you i'll give you an example every time i do a private training session one-on-one -on -one with somebody in person in here where i am located they come with this understanding that my dog is food motivated, treat motivated. How do I change this? And by the time that we do the initial uh, consultation and training, which is about 90 minutes that I do, 
their mindset, it changes because I show them, I teach them, and I show how simple it is to train their dogs without treats. And they see the possibilities, which brings me to offer that I have today. And this is a special offer that I want to share with you. And I don't share this offer. I haven't been sharing this offer with anybody else. This is only to those who are watching this live session. So let me share the screen with you. So today, and I mean this week, it's a long weekend here in Canada. So if you want also to work with me one-on-one -on -one and you're not local to me and you're not in where I am, if you're local with me, you can just contact me using uh, the website and set up a session and we go with the training one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're not local and you still want my help, you need, you need my help, you need a one-on-one -on -one help with the trainer like me, I offer a virtual training to limited students. Okay, so I'm offering you an opportunity to work with me the same way I work with my clients one-on-one -on -one here. So I'll give you one hour of consultation and training, which is in-person consultation and training. I You will actually go through what issues that you have and I'll offer you some solutions. And also I will show you how simple it is to change your dog's mindset and train your dog. I will use either my own dog or I will guide you to do what you need to do with your dog live in person one-on-one. -on -one. You get also an unlimited email for two months. So you have any problems, any issues that you have, you can contact me by email and I will share and answer a solution for you. You also get videos and files that you need to work with. Uh, so you have some content um, to watch and read and study and learn what you have to do. And basically two months of support from me. The regular price for this option virtual training is 195. But I'm going to offer you a code today that will give you 20% off, which is going to bring it down to 156 Canadian dollar. So this is only this long weekend, you get 20% off. As I said, it's a long weekend here in Canada. That's why I'm offering this. So sale ends on August 2nd at midnight Pacific Standard Time. All you have to do if you want to work with me there's a limited space that I choose. Okay, so if you are, if you are, if I get too many, I'm going to stop it somewhere. But if I get few, I will take those students and work with them uh, because I have a life too. I have a full time job that I do, which is dog daycare. Uh, I run a doggy daycare and also work with other dog owners as well. Training. So all you have to do is enter the code summer 21 in the cart and you will get the 20% off. And I have pinned the link to this page on the top of the chat line. Uh, hopefully you can see it. It's very, it's on very top of the chat line and anybody can see it. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to get into the question today of uh, the day that we have. And then meanwhile, we'll still talk about um, dogs and how to train dogs without treats. So I see that Diana Lopez is in the house. Lopez. Diana Lopez. 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 Yes. Uh, so how do you get the beagle you uh, beagles you to stop pulling? Beagle. How do you get? How do, can I get my beagle to stop pulling? Okay, that's the better way of saying the question. Well, the reason a beagle pulls is because they are meant to pull. What I mean by that is beagles are meant to uh, track. They are tracking dogs. They are yeah. scent dogs. What that means is their nose is always on. What does it mean? That they are supposed to do that. They are supposed to sm sniff and smell the roses literally and track it 
right? So you have to allow your beagle to do it. So you're saying, are you crazy? I want to walk my dog. You know, I can't let my beagle do, just sniff. Yes, you should do that. As a beagle owner, you have to let your dog to sniff. Now, if you have another breed of dog, which is not beagle, and your dog is still sniffy dog and likes to sniff and smell the roses, you have to let your dog to do that. You have to let your beagle to literally do whatever it wants during the walk. If you do that, obviously the pulling is going to stop. Why? Because you're allowing your beagle to do whatever it wants. One thing that I usually teach and show people is that when you're going for a walk with your dog and you're holding the leash like this tight and you're hoping that this walk is going to go smoothly, it's not going to happen. This is not the way you should be walking. This is not the way that your dog should be walking either. This is you're having a torture and you're torturing your dog. That's not the way to walk. The walk should be this way. In your mindset, you have to say, you know, this is my dog's walk and I'm going to let my dog to walk during this time. So let's say if you are taking your beagle for 30 minutes walk, that 30 minutes, your beagle can do whatever he wants. If it wants to sniff one spot for 10, 15 minutes, that's up to them. Let them do it. If they want to track somewhere and stop somewhere and sniff somewhere, let them do it. If you do that, all that stress in from your head is going to go away because then you're allowing the dog to do whatever it wants, and you're not putting pressure in, on you to walk like this with your dog, with the leash tight. So just allowing your beagle to do whatever it wants, it will fix everything. So it's the reason your beagle is pulling is because you're not allowing your beagle to do what it wants. If your beagle wants to sniff, if you want your beagle wants to go and say hi to other dogs, which are usually, that's the reason, let them do it. This applies to any dog. So let them do whatever they want and they will stop the pulling. I have an online course, um, by the way, uh, which is, if you go to my, let me share the screen with you. If you go to my, on top there is online courses, and there is a course called, called Leash Walking Solutions and Problem Solving. We dive in a little bit more deeper regarding this topic and you learn the actual techniques and ideas that it, you can implement. So I highly suggest you to maybe take advantage of this course and learn a little bit more about how to walk your dog properly on a leash. Hopefully that answered your question. And we have Gabby from uh, Chicago saying oh, uh, greetings. Uh, John Capola is here hello, uh, saying hello to everybody. Um, KDC has the next question is from Northern Ireland. Welcome, that is amazing. Uh, the beauty of uh, technology today is that we get uh, people from all over the world. I have students from all over the world as well. It's very amazing to have this uh, opportunity to talk to everybody from all over the world. I have a question about separation anxiety. It's really bad and can't leave her at all as she barks and barks. She's a beagle and I recently let her have a litter and we kept one so I'm hoping it will help. She's a beagle and she's three. Okay, so this is a great question. Actually, I just recently uh, posted a video on my channel regarding how to leave your beagle home alone. Uh, if you go to my channel, let me show you. Uh, home alone, this is the video that I'm talking about, home alone. Uh, tips for leaving your dog home alone. This is a very important video for everybody to go ahead and watch if you haven't watched. Uh, it's one of my recent recent videos. Um, in that video, I talk about 
few things. One of them is that some dogs, you know, it doesn't have to be a beagle or it doesn't have to be this breed or that breed. But although some breeds are more prone to be more independent than others, what that means is if you have a dog who's a little bit independent and is it, it can it can tolerate being alone, some breeds are like that. What are those breeds? I would say, you know, most working breeds are not. Working breeds usually have been bred to work with human uh, alongside the human, right? Including beagle, beagles. They are they're hunting, you know, working hunting dogs, and they're supposed to work alongside a human. What that means is that they are supposed to be with the human all the time. They're their partner. So they are bred to be re- working with the human. So you can't undo that. You can't say, okay, uh, you can't be with me or certain breeds, certain dogs, you can't separate them from you because that, that's one of the things that they have been bred for. And the other thing is just that that their personality is the way they are. You know, they want to be attached to the human. They are they're very de- uh, dependent on their human. If we, we call them Velcro dogs. You know, there are dogs who follow you everywhere where you go. Those dogs, they are very sensitive. They are dependent on you, they're the human or whoever they have bonded with. So you can't really separate them. It, it traumatizes them when you separate them. So in the nutshell, in the deeper form, it all depends on your beagle's personality. If it's a sensitive dog that needs to be with the human or it's human or it's thing that has bonded with, could be a bird if it needs to, if it has bonded with that bird, could be a bird. But they need to be with that individual. I had a client the other day for our doggy daycare. She came in with her dog and the dog had severe separation anxiety to the point that they had to medicate the dog. Uh, And the dog, when I met the dog, it literally showed, I could see the the, the stress level, uh, the anxiety level that even even though she, the dog was with the, the owner, the location had been changed. She was, the dog and the owner were in the new location. That itself stressed the dog. So there are certain dogs and certain breeds and certain situations that a dog is very sensitive, like uh, they can't be left alone. So you have to con- be considerate and consider that and go with that. You know, just because you're we're in, in the media and everywhere, everybody says that your dog needs to be social, needs to be okay with whatever. That's not real. You know, every person, every dog, every individual has personality that needs to be um, um, getting what it needs to get from life, right? So your beagle, Katie, may not be a type of beagle that likes to be alone, right? I have two dogs myself at the moment. I have Annie and Harvey. Uh, Let me show you Harvey, this one. Um, So Harvey is more attached to us, where Annie is a little bit more independent. Uh, Annie doesn't care uh, that much. It, It still loves us, loves to be with us, but if I leave her in a crate, for example, doesn't mind. If I leave her for an hour or two, doesn't mind it, doesn't care. Whereas Harvey, um, who's a little bit more attached to us and been with us for 11 years, now he's used to this routine. And when I separate him from us, it stresses him, doesn't like that. So. It depends on the personality too. So, and then if you want to train this dog, if there, is there a possibility to train a dog to tolerate separation and not to be anxious? Yes. 
it takes time. Uh, you need to teach the dog the stay command first and then the wait command. And wait command means wait for me, I'll be back. And when you teach the dog the wait command, which is different than stay, the dog is able to tolerate um, not having you in in person, and it, and it will be waiting for you. So there is a video that I can share with you that you can watch. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put it in in the comments area. Hmm? In the chat area, yes, I'm going to put the link to the wait command in the chat area. And you can go ahead and watch that and see if that helps. All right. Okay, let's go to the next question. Who is the next question? Hmm? CMY family says, what's up? Um, Gabby Ramos. And yeah, the question is not complete. Oh. How do I get my beagle to stop jumping as I walk and she wants to play? Uh, so Gabby, your question is, how do you get your beagle to stop jumping as you walk and she wants to play? So Gabby, I don't, I'm not sure how old your beagle is, but um, overall, if your beagle is doing something like that, that means it's it needs to get a little bit more mentally stimulated because the walk is not stim stimulating enough. Uh, and the reason she's jumping, uh, your beagle is jumping on you, there are several reasons. One is not stimulated enough. Two is it wants to interact with you. Three, it's stressed and is not getting what it wants or is communicating it to you. So there are several reasons why that happens. I, I have to watch you guys in order for me to um, uh, learn what the reason is. Sorry, I have. Okay, that's the question. Uh, so I have to watch you. But those are the three main reasons I would say at the moment that is causing that happen. One is that it's not stimulated enough. So it wants to play more. So what I would suggest you to do is do a five to 10 minutes play time in the house before you go for a walk to bring that energy level down. So it will have a little bit calmer energy during the walk. And not many people do that. They, they take the dog directly to walk and hoping that dog, the walk is going to satisfy the dog, stimulate the dog enough. But as, as you know, again, your dog, most dogs, they want to interact with you. you know, they, they love you. They want to interact with you. So interact with them for five, ten minutes before the walk. That will bring the energy level down. Right. Play with your dog. You know, play. You know, have some fun time before the, the walk. The other reason is, could be that the, the walk itself is not stimulating enough. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure during the walk, you're stimulating your beagle a little bit more. If you're Again, if you're walking like this with your beagle with a tight leash and you're not allowing your dog to walk and do whatever it wants, it will get stressed or not get stimulated enough. Uh, so it will communicate in a way with you, which usually when they jump on you, that's a way of communication. Many dog owners translate jumping up on people and things like that as a bad behavior, but it is also a way of communication from dogs. Remember, dogs cannot tell you in person with words what they're feeling and what they're going through. So they do it with actions, with behaviors. So when they're jumping on you, it's telling you to make me get a little bit more stimulated or allow me to do whatever I want so I can get stimulated. Allow your beagle to sniff 
do whatever it wants, that will help the, the lack of stimulation. Hope that helps. Uh, which question? Petco now more. Petco now now more. How long do beagles live? Okay, Petco Petco is asking how long do beagles live? Usually they are. Very hard to raise. Are they and also are they really hard to raise? Uh, usually beagles live about 16 years, 16, 15, 16, 17 maybe maximum. That's the normal. I've heard stories that a beagle has lived up to 20 years. So there are rare uh, cases that that can happen. They're not that hard to raise as long as you're willing to dedicate enough time and energy to train them, to exercise them, to socialize them, and let them be a beagle. You may say, what's the difference between beagle and other breeds? Well, beagles, as I said, they have been bred to uh, sniff and follow scent and hunt, right? I'm not saying you have to let your beagle to hunt every day, <laughs> but what you can do is you can allow your beagle to practice that behavior. And the way, only way that you can allow a beagle to practice that behavior is by, you know, letting them do whatever they want during the walk to sniff. Hope that it helps. Um, CMY family. CMY family. Hey, so my question for today is Cockapoo stopped drinking water after changing her diet to 100% raw. She says nothing is wrong with the water. That is very normal. If a dog doesn't drink water, if it's on a raw diet, that is very normal because they get the moisture or the water intake that they need naturally from the raw meat, raw diet. Unfortunately, when you, this is very good point that you're bringing up and they're very good, not, it's a very good um, feedback also uh, to everybody else who's watching this and reading this. Uh, if you're feeding your dog kibble or dry food and your dog is drinking all the time, that is because dry food or kibble is highly processed pro first of all and it's lacking moisture and dogs have to replace that moisture that they need from drinking water which is not natural i mean you know it's not naturally supplied by the food it's naturally supplied by water you know the water content in a food is different than water content that they drink the moisture is different. Uh, the moisture in the food has vitamins, minerals, and all kinds of good stuff. Whereas just the water itself has its own, you know, normal um, benefits of drinking your water. You're just providing moisture when you're drinking water. But when you take it from food, it has different values. And not only it helps the dog uh, not to put pressure on its bladder because it's drinking water all day long, but it gets a lot of benefits and uh, nutritional benefits from the meat and the moisture that it's getting from the meat and the raw diet, plus all the minerals and vitamins that they get from the that moisture that they're taking in. So if you're feeding your dog kibble or dry food, remember, it is not natural for a dog to eat kibble or dry food. In the next, in the upcoming week, I'm going to be posting a video, which we're going to a little bit talk about that a little bit more in depth and in better explanation is going to be done by few individuals who are professional in the dog industry, and they're going to share their thoughts about raw diet. So it's a, about 20 minutes video. 
if you really care about your dog, if you are passionate about your dog, you're going to dedicate 20 minutes of your life to watch this video and learn that. And if it changes your mind and you need help, let me know and I can help you. But CMI family, it is 100% natural for a dog who is on a raw diet not to drink water excessively. They will drink water here and there. It's not that they are completely not drinking water. They will drink water if it's really hot or if they have done a high activity play or anything like that, they will drink water. Punk ask. Punk ask. Punk ask. What should we feed a dog other than kibble? So I just explained. You know, the best option is raw diet or home home cook diet. So if you are not comfortable to transition from kibble to raw diet all of a sudden, all you need to do is slightly cook the meat and have, I would suggest to have raw vegetables. Raw vegetables is fine, uh, but maybe, you know, put it in a blender or processor to make it as juicy as possible. That way it, not only it's easy for your dog to digest it, but also it helps to digest the food and also has uh, vitamins and minerals of its own kind uh, when you feed raw vegetables. So definitely uh, either raw diet or home cooked diet. Uh, on jelly sarki, can't train my dog. I have tried all the possibilities, but I feed, I fail. I think that's what I mean. What do you mean? You know, when many dog owners, they tell me that I have tried everything and nothing works, I say to those people is, you haven't tried mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you try everything, if you if you have tried everything under the sun, I guarantee you there are other, 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 and few other options still available that you can use, right? Training a dog is, when it comes to training a dog, is not to just get the dog to sit and stay and listen to you. It's a matter of making that connection with your dog. If your dog is not connected with you, no matter what you do, no matter what method of dog training you use, you're, you're going to fail because you're just um, looking at it from the surface. But when you use my dog training method, which is play and praise reward system, not only it allows you to train your dog faster, better, and it lasts long, but it helps you to create that foundation, that connection that it is natural and is needed between a dog and a human. One thing that you have to remember, and I, rem I remind every dog owner all the time, that dogs have been designed and bred by humans for humans. So what that does that mean? That we breed dogs that are well behaved and are healthy and good to work with us and among us, not against us, right? So your dog is naturally, naturally made, bred for you all you have to do is use natural form of connection with your dog so your dog can connect with you. Once you build that connection, which is using play and praise, just interaction with your dog, then your dog has that connection with you and then you can teach that dog any command that you want, anything that you want. But if you don't have that connection, no matter what you do, you're not going to succeed because your dog doesn't see you as the person who the dog can connect with. If you are only using treats 
and you use treats to, let's say, to ding, dangle it or in front of your dog and ask your dog to do something. And if your dog does it, then you give the treat to the dog. Then your dog says, for this behavior, all I have to do is do it. And this, my human, this human is going to give me treats. That way you are programming yourself and your dog to respond to treats only. But when you have a real connection with your dog, your dog doesn't say, this human is trying to connect with me. Your dog says, my mom or my dad, or whatever you want to call it, is trying to connect with me and is trying to tell me and teach me something. It becomes more personal. It becomes more uh, in-depth connection. And when you have that connection, if you create that connection, which you can using my method of play and praise reward system, no matter what you do, you're not going to fail. So my method of dog training is guaranteed to give you results, 100% results and that is the reason why i say on my website 100 percent healthy dog training with proven results because you will get results and if you don't know and don't understand it and you don't believe me just either go to my website and get the free training or register for one of my online courses and see it for yourself that is doable it is possible there is no way that you can fail at training your dog if you do the right thing hope that helps uh anjali and next one uh, I commented uh, to your last video, please check it out. So I have the comment here, I'm going to read it. I really need your help. I'm going to read the comment and I'm, I'm reading, reading it from my phone. Uh, the last video, uh, which was about the uh, guide dog uh, personality in, uh, in uh, wolves. Uh, I really need your help. As I'm working six hours a day, it's hard to spend time with my dog and train him. And sometimes when I try to stop him from something like eating stuff on the floor, etc., and whenever I pick him up, he grows. She shows his teeth and bites. He's five months old, uh, so his teeth aren't that strong, but I am worried he'll do the same after he grows up. I tried training him by giving him treats, some basic training like sit and stop, but he never listens, follows, my, follows any of my command, his German shepherd. So uh, how do you say this name? Eugene? Eugene, I'm, I, believe we, I believe your name is Eugene, Eugene Blick. Can I call you Blick? I'll just call you Blick. That's easier for me to say. Um, I read your comment and it's it's a very you know interesting question and I understand that you have a five month old German Shepherd puppy and you're obviously using treats to train your dog. That's one first mistake that you're making. Let me explain that. If you have a German Shepherd, now I'm not I don't want to I don't want to um, uh, disrespect other breeds. But German Shepherds are one of the, uh, they're, they're one of the most intelligent, easy to train breed of dogs. So what that means, you really don't have to do much to train a German Shepherd. You have to do a little bit of work with Beagles, but with German, German Shepherd, for instance, it's easy peasy so simple that that anybody can do it if you watch and if you search internet 
or YouTube, you will see a lot of dog trainers are using Border Collies, German Shepherds, Mal Mal Malmos, Malinois, Malinois and uh, all these working breeds. Malinois, yes. <laughs> Malinois. Malinois, yes. It's very, you know, everybody says it differently. That's the problem with that breed name. So let me bring you bring it back. So why is it those trainers they use those dogs? Because they're easy to train. Simple. Very simple. You don't have to do you don't have to lift the arm to train them. That's simple. Obviously, they get great results because they're training uh, a German Shepherd or something like that, right? And they show off. And you, as a dog owner, you watch that, you're saying, wow, he's a great trainer. He can do amazing things with this dog. But the fact is, it's very simple to train these dogs. Try to train a Basset Hound. Try to train a Beagle to jump off the wall, to do tricks. Good luck with that. What I mean by that is, you have a breed that is very easy to train. That's number one. Number two is when you use treats to train a highly intelligent breed like that, it's a disrespect to that breed, to that dog. That dog will say, hey, I'm the most intelligent breed of dogs and you're using treats to train me? What the hell is wrong with you? I can jump off the wall and you're dangling treats in front of me. That's a disrespect, right? So that breed, that dog is com completely communicating to you clearly that, hey, do the right thing. So what I mean by this breed and what you should do is remove treat training completely. Use play and praise. One other thing that you have to understand, play and praise reward system for dogs is work. Yes, it is work. What I mean by that, if you have seen videos or TV shows that the German Shepherd is used in the, in the uh, let's say they're busting a drug dealer or something, right or they're re searching a car for to see if there's drugs soon as the the dog detects that there is a drug in the car for instance what is the first thing that the handler does with the dog guess what it does it plays with the dog the reward of that german shepherd is play tug of war or fetch or whatever it is give them a toy because the dog says, I'm going to do work because I want to work more. And play and praise is the reward for that dog. It's not treats. You would never see them giving them treats. If you've seen a beagle working at the airport where his job is to search food or fruits that they're bringing from other countries, the beagle, as soon as notices there is a uh, food or fruit in the in a suitcase it sits in front of it and that's a signal that there's food or fruits in that suitcase what does the handler do gives treats to that beagle that breed breed of dog beagle yes as a dog handler you should you, you could use treats to reward that dog. But a German Shepherd is not satisfied with treats. It needs to play. So you have to use play and praise as a reward system with your dog. So if you do that, you will get great results. And that is one of the biggest problem with many dog owners, whether you have a working breed or not, your dog tells you that I don't need treats. That's why I'm not going to listen to you. That's why you don't get good results when you use treats as a reward system to train your dog because your dog says, this is confusing. I don't want to do this. 
I'm just going to do it because you're forcing the treat in my mouth. So I'm going to do, take it, but I'm not happy. I don't want to do this for treats. I want to do this because I love you, because I want you to interact with me. If you, your mindset is that way, everything changes. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, the beagle at the airport, you have, because it's being fed treats, you have to use treats to train your beagle. No, you, it, it is possible to train beagles without treats too. And I have done it with all my beagles. All my beagles respond to play and praise. All my beagles are off leash all the time. All my beagles listen to me all the time. All my beagles have a great personality life. They are not suffering because they're not being treat trained. They're actually happier and healthier. So that that should help and answer your question. I uh, did I answer every part of that question? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, hold on. Next question is Daman Jaggi. I have a month old mid um, beagle male, and uh, male, beagle. male beagle and he has a habit of eating anything and everything like clothes wrapping etc uh, so there, there's, hmm? there's more. Um, please suggest a way to cure this habit few months ago he swallowed a piece of cloth which led to an uh, autopsy autopsy and those, and those endoscopy he has put his life to danger many times uh, you know unfortunately we have to allow our dogs to do behaviors like this in order for us to really do something about it and i'm glad that you came here today and you're asking this question and what what to do especially that you have an eight months old beagle and it's a puppy you need to provide your beagle a lot of physical and mental stimulation. Let me bring up this formula. Uh, many dog owners, they don't do this. They don't, um, they don't provide their dogs daily five essential needs. Let me explain quickly what this is. For example, you as a human being, uh, if you want to live a healthy and happy life, you need things. You need car, you need your house, you need your phone, you need coffee machine, you need coffee, you need wine, you need um, good food, you need uh, traveling, you need uh, good work, blah, blah, and et cetera, et cetera, right? To be healthy, happy, and have a good life. In other words, dogs, they don't need all this stuff what they need is proper amount of exercise proper month of training socialization and then care and then affection so they need five things on daily basis so you have to provide these daily five essential needs for them in order for them to be happy they don't value cars as happiness they don't value a coffee machine as happiness they value do I get enough exercise? Do I get training? Yes, dogs need training. Training, I'm not saying, you know, uh, train your dog like a soldier every day. No, interaction using play and praise with your dog on a daily basis is a must. I do that with my dogs every day. I train them light levels and professional levels uh, here and there almost every day they need that training the training is not just hey sit stay do this do that that's not it training is let's practice this today right i challenge my dog mentally every day so exercise is physical challenge physical stimulation training is mental stimulation socialization is social stimulation and then you provide care and then you share affection. If you have done everything, exercise, training, socialization, and proper care for your dog, then you and your dog deserve to share affection with each other. And if you don't do that, your beagle is gonna say, you know what, how do I express to my human 
that I need these five things because I chew their floors, I pee on their bed, I do this, I do that, they don't get it. So I'm going to eat this cloth and hopefully they will get something. So your beagle is communicating to you, is clearly having a communication with you, is telling you that, hey, provide my daily five essential needs. Otherwise, not only I'm going to put myself into danger, I'm going to do things that it bothers you. It does harm me and harm the house and the family uh, um, structure. So your beagle is communicating to you. He's telling you that he needs, he or she needs uh, uh, stimulation, mental, physical, social stimulation on daily basis. You have to come up with a way to provide this mental daily, daily and mental, uh, physical and social stimulation every day. If you don't know what they are, I have an online course. It's called A Dog's Five Essential Needs. You can register for that course and learn what they are and provide them every day for your puppy. Hope that helps. Next, John Kipola. John Kipola is actually one of my students and she's he's got a puppy a 10 week old puppy and he's one of my students actually as i said hmm? last sunday he got his puppy so how do i get my beagle to stop walking in front of me and i'm always tripping over her i don't want to break her leg <laughs> you know, you're not going to break her leg, but the thing is, you have to let your puppy to walk at this stage. You know, when you have a small puppy, young puppy, you have to let your puppy to explore the world. If you take away that freedom from your puppy, uh, that will cause a lot of stress and it's going to develop. It, it will d eventually turn out to develop unwanted bad behaviors so what you can do you can use a long leash to let your uh, beagle to walk um, you know on leash uh, on leash but on a long leash uh, let me see if i can I have a video that i can so sorry sorry about that uh, let me see if i can show you an example um, let me just quickly look at my videos to see if I have a video that I have used that scene. I have, you know, John, I have lessons in the in the course anyways, you will see it, uh, that I use long leash to to train my puppy. I can't find at the moment, but you can use a long leash and let the leash loose and let the leash go, but have the end of the leash in your hand so your puppy is not going to just take off and go anywhere. But let the leash loose and let it let the puppy just walk freely. Go left, right, stay, explore. Let it let it do whatever it wants. If you do that, again, you not only not stressing your puppy, you're not stressing yourself. Why am I going to trip over here or things like that? It, it relaxes your walk. It changes everything. So that would be my suggestion. I believe next is Alan. Uh, my Alan has a question from uh, and is saying, uh, my six months old beagle is always biting, but not because he's aggressive. I play with him all the time, take him to the dog park daily, three times a day, plays with others, chew toys, how, make, how to make him stop biting. Um, if you're doing all this and your puppy is still chewing you, biting you, it's a sign that probably you're doing too much. Yes. So remember uh, the formula that I was sharing with you? which was
provide daily exercise training, socialization, care, and affection. So the exercise, maybe you're exercising your puppy too much. You know, exercise has to be provided properly for any dog. As, you know, you have to remember a few things. Your dog's age, where am I? Your dog's age, your dog's breed, your dog's personality. You have to remember these three things when it comes to exercising. So if your dog is young, if you exercise it too much, you're creating a, a, a hyper-reactive dog. And if you exercise it too little, you're creating a dog who's not who's lacking a proper amount of exercise. If you exercise a beagle in your case, which I guess you're exercising it too much, you're gonna. This is what happens. Again, your beagle is communicating to you that, that hey, this is too much for me. I'm I'm being exercised too much. One thing, few things that you have to remember also is that puppies, even though your puppy is six months old, it still needs to sleep 16 to 18 hours a day. Not many dog owners do that. Overall, all dogs at any age, they need to sleep 16 to 18 hours a day. And we don't allow them to sleep actually enough. And we don't learn from our dogs for ourselves, not, not only not to sleep, but to take it easy. Our lives is a go, go, go. And we think our dog's lives has to be go, go, go as well. No. Animals, they need, they like calmness. They like to have peace and quiet. They hate action. Actions should be short, sweet, done. So, for instance, uh, with a puppy, I would in exercise it maybe four or five times a day, 15 minutes each time, not more than that. Uh, if I have a healthy adult dog, I'll do two half an hour. If I have a senior, I'll do a couple of half an hour, 20 minutes, maybe, uh, depending on the age. And then the rest, they rest. The rest of the time, they rest and relax. So. Maybe start teaching your beagle to rest. Give it an opportunity and a chance to sleep, to rest. And if you see that it's not cooperating, that's a sign that you have created a beagle who's hyperreactive. So your goal should be to provide more mental stimulation rather than physical stimulation. So a lot of training, little bit of exercise. 30% exercise, 70% training. Many dog owners, what they do, they do 100% of exercise or they do 70, 80% of exercise, maybe 10, 20, 30% of training, not even on a daily basis. So I hope that helps. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, I will quickly answer the rest of the questions. Francesco um, Mancuso is asking, 15 months old border collie will not come when I call her in home and especially outside. That's because you haven't practiced on short leash. So when it comes to calm or recall command, you have to teach your dog in a, on a short leash first, uh, I would say a six foot leash and make sure that you keeping your dog on a leash when you're training it to come. Don't have it off leash when you're asking it to come. So for instance, you're, you're staying at home and your dog is um, in, a, in the backyard and you're in the living room or in the kitchen and you say, Rover, come, and Rover doesn't come. So now Rover learns not to come. So don't get tempted to call your dog when your dog doesn't come to you or your dog doesn't know exactly what come is. Because when you do that, your dog learns verbally and physically and emotionally not to come to you. So what you want to do is you want to 
avoid calling your dog when you are even 1% sure that your dog may not come, come to you. So don't call your dog. And when your dog is on a leash, ask it to come. When you put the dog on a leash, your dog has limited choices to make and it will come to you. And that way it learns to come all the time. And then what you do, you extend the leash through a few weeks and get it to the point that, that the leash is longer and longer. And one day you will have it off leash and hopefully by then your dog has learned to come. So that That's way, um, yes, you off leash your dog too early and your expectations also are too high. So take the time to train your dog. Who's next? Slip, 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 slap. Slip, slap. Slip, slap. Hello, Saro. I've taught my dog to go in toilet to a diaper that's on the floor. How can I teach him to go to the toilet outside of the house now when he's older, three and a half months old? Simple. Put the leash on, put the collar leash on, take your puppy out every two hours for the next uh, 48 hours and take it to where you're, you want your puppy to do its business. As soon as it does the business, praise it. Why am I saying every two hours? Because that's normally the time that they have to relieve themselves. If your puppy is on a kibble or dry food, that's normally that's the time that they have to relieve themselves. Uh, so puppies, usually that's how long it takes. Or figure out, for example, when does my puppy have accidents and take it out 10 minutes before it happens. You do that for 48 hours, your puppy is going to learn. Uh, Frito boy, I have a female German Shepherd and she barks to the mailman, anyone that gets close to the house. She's really territorial, even in the car. What can I do to stop this really? behavior? Hmm? So yeah, there are several things that are happening here. One, you have a breed that is designed to do that, is bred to do that. Two, okay. is it's a behavior that it's, it's wanted behavior, but you're not being able, you haven't controlled the behavior. So what I mean by that, let me explain from my point of view, from me, my experience with beagles. Beagles are meant to track sniff and just follow their nose. And I know that, right? But if I stop my beagle to do that, I'm going to start stressing my beagle. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to give my beagle opportunity to practice that behavior. But I'm going to teach also the, that to respond to my verbal cues. So I'm not saying don't do that at all. I'm saying do it but re be able to control yourself. So your German Shepherd is bred to protect and guard. That's what we breed them most of the time. Uh, again, uh, I don't want to get into details, but you know, there's bad breeding, there is good breeding, there's certain breeders who are breeding certain German Shepherds, for example, for certain tasks. So I'm not sure what your German Shepherd breed is coming from. But if she's giving you that behavior, that means she's been bred to give you to, to do this behavior. It's a wanted behavior. It's been bred in your Shepherd. So you have to acknowledge that. And but you need to control it. So many big owners, I have told, for example, to many big owners, owners that you have to let your beagle to do what it wants, but you have to turn, be able to turn it off. How do you turn off that behavior is by training. How do you train a beagle to respond to you is by daily training when your beagle, uh, when your shepherd is not dealing with the mailman or is not in the car. Maybe in the house where there is nice and calm, there is no distractions. You teach your dog the verbal cue of no. How do you teach a, a German Shepherd a verbal cue of no? You play with it, and during the play, 
you say no and yes you can pay you can fetch you can take this toy you can do this you can do that but also you can't do this you can't take that you can't keep your that in your mouth and you verbalize it you say no and your shepherd learns okay uh, there is a yes and no happening here so i'm going to have to respond to both of them so you're when it comes to other behaviors you can implement this training that you have done with your shepherd in other situations so that's how i teach so i'll give you a quick example harvey my beagle uh he used to i used to walk him off leash when he was younger and he used to pick a stick and chew on it and i didn't want that and he was off leash and he was way ahead of me right so instead of me yelling, hey, Harvey, stop it, stop, drop it. You're, no, instead of doing that, right, which makes a scene and it's very unprofessional, all I had to do is, Harvey, no, and boom, he would drop the stick and walk off. So that's how you control a dog, verbal cues. And that's how you control your German Shepherd. You're saying, okay, mailman is there. Yes, I understand. Bark, may, but as soon as it barks once or twice, you say, Rover, nope. And Rover says, okay, I did my job. Now I'm going to respond to my human. And the human is going to say, sit and stay. You're giving your sh Shepherd another job. So if you don't give it a job, your German shepherd is going to say, this is what I'm going to do. The mailman comes, I'm going to bark at it because that's my job. But you're saying, okay, don't do that job 100%. Uh, let me give you another position. You're replacing that job with another job. You're replacing that position with another position. So you're saying, okay, bark and then come back and do this instead. Make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. It, it makes sense in my mind, but I'm not sure if it makes sense to me with you. Um, Nola. Nola is next. Um, hi, sir. Just joined. Been recommending you. So hope you have a few more views. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, hot here in UK. It's very hot in Canada, too, at least in this part of the world, uh, Canada. But notice my beagle is panting more, even though I have a fan on him. He's now 10. Should I be worried? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, what I would suggest is if you could get watermelon, for example, and chill it and feed your beagle watermelon, that cools them off. Uh, water is good. Cool water is good. Give them ice uh, to cool off. We give, I give my dogs watermelon, it cools them off. Uh, don't take your beagle in the hottest time of the day for walks and exercise. Maybe just walk them in the early morning and in the late evening when it's cooler. You know, just be, be cautious, be aware that there's a heat going on and they don't do well with heat. Fan is okay, but the problem with fan is that it just blows hot air to your dog as well. Um, I would suggest, you know, there's all other solution. There's these bandanas. What are they bandanas? Yeah, it's a bandana um, that you can wet it with water and put it on your dog's neck uh, and that cools them off. I've seen that happening. Um, so there are a few solutions that you can you uh, you can come up with P R Z Y gas P R Z Y gas should I make a beagle wear a muzzle not to eat everything outside that's a good question <clears throat> uh, the problem with that is when you again when you put a muzzle on a dog you're limiting that dog to do what is naturally bandage. meant uh, uh, to do and also it is a band-aid solution I'd rather to right. teach my dog to do what is wanted and what is not wanted. So what I'm going to do, I have done a video about this topic. Uh, let me just quickly find it. And I'm going to post it on the on the uh, in the chat area just quickly. There we go. I found it. 
So I'm going to post the, the video in the chat area, and it's called How to Stop Dog from Eating Everything on the Ground and Leave It. That's the title of the video. It's in the chat area. You can go ahead and watch that, and it will give you the answers. Okay. Uh, I'd rather train it than put the muzzle on. Muzzle is a bandit solution, as I said. Uh, Melcom Marashian. Melcom Mar Marashian. I'm guessing it's an Armenian just like me. Welcome, Melcom. Um, but uh, hi, Sarah Melcon from Oakville, Ontario. With every meal, we add pumpkin powder, herring oil, salmon, salmon oil, green vegetable powder to her raw food. She's currently finishing her first estra cycle. What is heat? Okay. Um, also, also, yeah. And also, she has developed kennel cough, and we are giving her the medication that the vet has prescribed. Are we overdoing the supplement as she's vomiting often? Uh, you know, I'm not a vet, but from my experience, working with dogs year, for years and years and seeing what people feed their dogs and what I feed my dog and what I don't experience and what other dog owners experience is one thing that I would say, first of all, your powder pumpkin, herring oil, powder pumpkin, um, I'd rather give fresh pumpkin or squash uh, veg, uh, green vegetable powder, again, that one I would also give fresh. Because when you use powder, you never know what's in it. Also, it's also it's when they are uh, in powder form, they have been heated, cooked, and the, the, the process, it's been processed. The, val the nutritional values are not there and or are down. So you don't want to give powder form. You want to give fresh. I would say suggest to give fresh. The herring oil, herring, herring oil and salmon oil, they're good. Maybe you're giving too much of oil. Um, pick one of them and just give one of them, uh, either herring oil or salmon oil, um, and that should be OK. The kennel cough is something that dogs experience all the time naturally. It's something is that just like humans, we experience flu. Dogs experience flu symptoms, uh, which we call it kennel cough. Now, do you need medication? In most cases, no. When the vet uh, prescribes medication, there are two things that are happening. One. The vet wants to make money to sell uh, medication to the dog owner. And two, is not educated enough to not prescribe medication to dog owners. Those are two red flags when a, a vet prescribes medication to a dog who has kennel cough. Kennel cough is very common in dogs. The worst thing is the first day or two or three that they have a cough and they go through this coughing uh, uh, segments throughout the day, which is, it sounds really bad, but it's okay. You know, during, when you have flu, you sneeze and it sounds bad. You can't talk, oh, it's horrible, but you get over it, right? Uh, so the same thing with uh, kennel cough. Now, one thing that I've noticed, my dogs who are on, raw diet who have been on raw diet for a long time and i have a doggy daycare as well and when there is a kennel cough going on some dogs catch it my dogs don't catch it and if my dogs catch it it goes away within hours not even a day right like my puppy, Annie, when I got her, she had a kennel cough going on. And she caught the kennel cough, uh, coughed once or twice, boom, 
gone. Her body was able to heal and get rid of the, the, the symptoms, the virus. Uh, especially that you're feeding your dog raw diet, I wouldn't put the medication in its system. Hope that helps. Um, there is Rajiv. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, I think that's about it for the day. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this live session. Let me just remind you one more time that I, if you want to work with me in person, I have a 20% off code that you can use this long weekend, the next three days. Today, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday uh, to take advantage of uh, this uh, cell that I have, which is 20% off, and it ends August 2nd, 2021, at midnight Pacific Standard Time. So you can work with me one on one if you're interested using virtual training. To and I have a limited space for this. I'm just gonna let few students to join in. Uh, in this core, in this uh, uh, virtual training you will have a one hour of consultation and training with me you'll start with that i'll figure out what your issues are your problems are and i'll give you a, a do's and don'ts and i also will show you with my own dog or i will use your dog as a demo uh, to teach you what you should do and what you should do how you can train your dog uh, you will have an unlimited support and emails for two months and you also get some files and videos that are related to the issue that you are having with and you need to work on. Uh, regularly, the price is $195 and the sale price is $165 only. And this is only for the next few days. I'm, I'm not offering this to anybody else. If this is only to my viewers on this channel at this moment who are watching this live session. Hopefully, you can take advantage of that. And let me see. Oh, okay. And uh, Nola is saying uh, that uh, are you Romanian? No, Armenian. Armenian from Armenian in Canada. A R A M A I N A N. Armenian. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this live session. You benefited from it. If you benefited, give it a thumbs up, share, and also subscribe to the channel so you will get more content like this, more educational content coming in future. I'm going to have a lot of videos about training and also um, have a, I've started a new series, uh, which is about you and your dog's wellness, uh, which a few episodes are still into uh, coming soon. They will come up, uh, I think, next week. Series part number two, you were going to see it, um, which we're going to talk about diet. And that is very important, actually. Hopefully, you can watch that. And um, also, if you are a member of the channel, if you are a viewer of the channel, I would really appreciate if you could share the channel with other dog lovers to allow the channel to grow faster because there are so many good content still coming and I have lots of good, great content in my channel too that other dog owners can benefit. So hopefully you will enjoy the content that I'm creating with you. And if you have any comments, feedbacks, anything that you think uh, it's, you, uh, it's going to help me and my channel, feel free to leave them in the comments area. And until next time, have fun with your dog and enjoy and stay cool 